This is the reason why, if we make, take this into a, a simple example, this is the reason why the Second Amendment exists in the United States. Because right, you don't know anybody you walk up on or you come across in traffic or something like that, or you want to yell at and give them the middle finger at the traffic light, you never know who that person is or what they have access to. All right, you might be able to physically beat them up, but what they have a gun, then your fists don't matter. All right, so this is what it does is, in a, in a general sense, the idea of it is, the spirit of the concept is, if I'm not sure you have a gun or not, I'm going to think twice before physically attacking you because you might have one and no amount, of, no amount of boxing skills is going to undo somebody shooting a bullet at your head. And the whole point of it is it creates a society where people are generally, for the most part, respectful of each other because you don't know what that person could do in defense if you happen to choose to attack them. And again, that's a general sense. Now, does that get misused sometimes? Of course it does. But that's the trade-off of life. Trade-off of life is that humans are imperfect. And when you put a bunch of imperfect beings together, you're going to have some imperfect outcomes. That is just life. That's the trade-off and that's the way it happens. No politician can tell you that because people don't want to hear logic and reason. And that's why I'm not a politician. But the first point, again, if you want to save space in life, you have to toughen the fuck up. All right. So if it's and this is just about looking at your paradigms and the way that you look at life and how you choose to look at things. And, for example, if it's snowing outside, right, you might be excited because you are your person who likes to ski or somebody else might not like it because they hate cold weather and they hate snow. Now, why they're living in a place where it snows, I don't know, but they hate cold weather. These are relative to subjective experience. These are relative and subjective experiences of the same reality. So one person looks at the snow and they're excited. Another person looks at it and they're unhappy. I'm telling you the same thing when it comes to safe spaces. There is no place in life where you can avoid danger. So instead, you need to make yourself the danger so that other people know they need to, to stay away from you or play their space properly when they're dealing with you. Every place you go and every person you meet is a possible threat. If you really think about it, if you want to think about it on that level. But when I go outside today, every person I walk by is a threat. I don't know if they have a gun or a knife or they're having a really bad day, or they just decided the next person I walk by, I'm going to do something to them. I have no idea if they're that or not. And I can't avoid that. The only way I can avoid that is by never going around another human being ever again in life. Now, how many of you will be able to survive doing that? You can't. So instead, what you want to do is arm yourself as dangerous such that if someone comes across you, they got to think twice. Okay, well, look, I could attack this lady, but who knows? She might have some pepper spray or some mace, or she might have a husband who has a gun, or she might have a gun in her purse. Let me, let me move on and keep walking and leave her alone. All right, that's what you want to do. 